from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Tragedy near Thief River Falls this morning as a seven-year-old boy was struck by a vehicle and killed while crossing a highway to get on a school bus. Thanks for joining us tonight. The victim has been identified as Anthony Fellman, a second grader at Challenger Elementary School. The female driver of the minivan that struck him was not injured. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what happened from the scene of the accident. It happened here on Highway 59, seven miles south of Thief River Falls at 7 o'clock this morning. The school bus was just rolling to a stop over in that driveway where the truck pulled in. That's where the Fellmans live down that driveway. What happened was Anthony Fellman was on this side of the road. Exactly why is still under investigation. When Anthony ran, ran across the road over to the school bus, he was hit by a van going northbound. The POI, our point of impact, is clearly marked where Anthony was hit on the other side of the road from his home and school bus. Again, I don't have all that information, but that all does remain under investigation as we're gathering statements from occupants on the school bus and from witnesses at the scene also. Meanwhile, Anthony Fellman's family, teachers and friends at Challenger Elementary School have to deal with the tragic loss of a seven-year-old boy. In talking with some of his teachers and people that knew him, talked about him having a personality that's larger than life. Uh, really wanted to, it was an infectious personality and just really was a, a great young man to be around. Counselors are on hand to help students cope with the loss. In this process, it's going to take a long time. This is not a one day, two day, one week, one month process. This is going to be, you know, a process that goes on for a good long period of time for um, lots of people. Special counseling is also available for the bus driver and his 12 students on the bus who witnessed the accident, including Anthony Fellman's siblings. The patrol says it's not known yet whether the bus's stop arm and flashing lights were on when the accident occurred. Meanwhile, the investigation of the accident continues. No charges have been filed. Near Thief River Falls, Minnesota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Thief River Falls has labeled their website Prowler Strong, and on that website you can find help for parents and children in dealing with this tragedy. A developing story as fire crews were called to a house fire in Holly, Minnesota. Officials say they have the fire under control. They believe it was caused by a heating lamp the resident was using. The call came in at 4.30, and at that time smoke was coming from the roof, followed shortly after by reports of flames coming from the home. Crews on the scene were calling other agencies for more water and manpower. One person has been rescued from the house. There's no word on that person's condition. Fifteen students stayed home today after a threat made against Lake Agassiz Elementary School in Grand Forks. The assistant superintendent there, Jody Thompson, says a teacher received a concerning message last night on her Twitter account. Thompson adds, since the police are actively investigating, he cannot disclose the content of that message. Now, Thompson says they did not feel the threat was credible, but no students were allowed outside during the day. Grand Forks police also maintained a presence at the school throughout the day. Thompson also adds that the students who stayed home did so at the parents' discretion. Police are investigating a shooting in an alley near Enderlin, North Dakota, involving two juveniles. The Ramson County Sheriff's Office says one of them suffered a gunshot wound. 911 call around 7 o'clock last night indicated that the shooting had taken place. The sheriff tells Valley News Live the shooting appears to be an accident involving a 22 rifle. The victim was taken to a hospital in Fargo. The sheriff says the victim was undergoing surgery, but his injuries do not appear to be life-threatening. This is the second gun incident involving children. Earlier this week, a 12-year-old in Barnes County died from an accidental gunshot. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop found out how you can avoid potentially dangerous situation, situations with firearms in your home. That they should be locking them up better and, you know, so the kids can't get a hold of them. You know, if you have guns, if you have guns in a, in a home, you have to keep it to a safe place. But, you know, some people just... Careless. It's one of the first things you learn when you become a gun owner. Lock it up. But can people become too comfortable around firearms and forget the power they have? There could be a certain set of complacency that would come into the picture if they're not used a lot. If it's a hunting rifle, you only take it out once a year. 
So that's something that definitely kind of gets overlooked. Brett Bratloff says he always tries to set a good example, along with rules, with his guns around his 11-year-old son. When it comes to safety in the house and, and with children around, they do def definitely need to be locked up. Um, and we also try to push the issue of keeping your ammo separate from your firearm. He says parents need to make their kids feel comfortable with a gun, but still set guidelines. I think it has to be identified as a rule because they are very, very dangerous. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. In North Dakota, the Game and Fish Department offers a hunting safety course that's mandatory for children once they turn 12 years of age. The shooting death of the 12-year-old Barnes County boy remains under investigation. We talked to a Barnes County chief deputy who told us that more details will be released later. Meanwhile, the funeral of the boy will be held tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Hurricane help from North Dakota is on the way to America's East Coast. A Red Cross team plus volunteers are set to leave Fargo this hour for Tallahassee, Florida. The first team develop, uh, deployed includes three response vehicles and four volunteers. But the Red Cross says that number may increase in the coming days. Here at home, the wind eased up a little, but we're still adjusting to the cooler temps. Let's check in with Hutch on tonight's weather. Hutch, what have you got? Well, I'll tell you what, down south we're seeing some rain showers, some of it quite heavy from Watertown in towards Wilmer, Minnesota. All of this will mainly impact our southern and eastern counties from Sisseton through say Battle Lake and the Wadena area tonight. Up to the northwest, we have snow showers taking place and those will be skirting along the border overnight. Look at the temperature range, 36 Williston, 61 degrees in Rochester. Your forecast for Fargo this evening, we stay dry. We'll have a fair amount of cloudiness. The wind will be pretty quiet. A cool overnight, in fact, we have a freeze warning for most of North Dakota, a frost advisory in much of western portions of Minnesota, and a winter weather advisory for the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Details on that in just a second, but certainly some unseasonably cool weather mm -hmm. ahead of us here in the valley. You could say that again. You bet. Thank you, Hutch. And remember, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. Police are hunting for two people after shots were fired and a man was assaulted near UND's campus in Grand Forks this morning. The suspects are described as a white male around 5'10", weighing 200 to 220 pounds, and a muscular black male around 250 pounds, 6 feet 5 inches tall, wearing a gray jacket. Just after 2 a.m., police responded to a call of shots fired. A few minutes later, police were flagged down by a man who said he'd found two men in his home and got punched in the face. Police found at least two bullet holes in the back of the house. Police believe this was not random, but they're still trying to figure out if the victim and suspects knew each other. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to contact Grand Forks Police. Tough day for one driver, a van getting stuck in fresh concrete along 13th Avenue South near the West Acres Mall. A witness says the driver was coming out of the Olive Garden parking lot, drove through construction cones, and got bogged down. Nearby workers were yelling for the driver to stop. A backhoe was needed to pull the van out. Workers estimate about $4,000 in damage to the concrete. Crews are supposed to start putting finishing touches on that particular project tomorrow. A rooftop rescue today at Sanford Hospital in downtown Fargo. A crane was called in to get a helicopter off the helipad. Air Med Director Tim Meyer says as the chopper was preparing to land, it received minor damage to its tail rotor. It landed safely. No patients or crew members were on board. The pilot was not injured. Fargo Mayor Tim Mahoney says he doesn't want anyone to ever again be faced with the decision of evacuating their homes. At a news conference regarding the FM Diversion Project, he shared a story about the flood of 2009 when he and then-Mayor Dennis Wallacher were told they needed to evacuate the city. The Diversion Project is still on, despite objections from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Mahoney also used today's conference to urge a yes vote on the sales tax extension. Voters will decide the fate of that in the general election next month. There's plenty of fall-related fun out there. And later on Valley News Live at 6, where you can go to find plenty of it, and it's in the same spot.
It was a cool day across the valley. We managed to see a little sunshine, however. Very cold weather overnight, and in fact, for parts of Minnesota, measurable snowfall. Details are next. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live.